So, so when you when you're doing uh, when you're doing a game and you're slightly outside your comfort zone, yeah. what brings that up? Then? What? You, you say it's, you will see in, interesting things. Yes, yeah. uh, there the, the, the are so from a neuroscience perspective, it's the, it's the, the, the theory is that uh, you connect your front of your brain, which does all the planning and the analyzing of, of, of data with the, the, the back of the brain, that is more the, the, the obs observing of information. And it's quite, uh, the society we live in now, there's quite a disconnect between the front and back. Well, if you are a little bit uncomfortable by uh, things like that, it, it might happen that, it, that you get this connection and that you make up things that you didn't, didn't know that you could make up. It's, it's a bit the same like when you're writing a, a diary, you don't know what you're going to write and then you surprise yourself what you write. But it is happening in the brain, but these areas need to communicate. Uh, and to that's actually happening less and less, and therefore and play, this will... play can help with that a little bit. And uh, uh, the main thing why it can help is it uh, lowers the stakes. It's not uh, you're not writing your dissertation. It's not uh, a public speaking. It's not uh, a presentation you prepared for. Uh, it's you're actually like today you're a bit. Um, uh, Sort of sneakily overwhelmed by a game that you didn't know you want to play and then then all of a sudden you're talking about uh, the storyline that you've never thought you would be talking about so, so yeah. that's that's a little bit okay. it really helps keep you elastic so so it, any kind of problem solving you know from kind of where are we going to go in summer to how am i going to get a new job and it's these sorts of exercises encourage you to go, okay, whatever it is, I can go sideways. I think. Thinking outside the box. Yeah, exactly. And the props are lovely because if we'd just been told to go around the circle and come up with ideas, I can guarantee you we would not have come up with that story. No. And, um, and so external props are really helpful for sparking thinking as well. So the, these little exercises are in a play space, but you can put them into a work environment or a life environment. Right. Yeah, it just sort of, it, it, you, you're teaching your brain to go from, I'm overwhelmed, all I can think of is what I've always thought of, to so, okay, how can we really go around this? Yeah. And, and you, have, you have basically three, it's not literally centers in your brain, but you could see the centers where you have uh, 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 noticing, experimenting, and sense making. And quite often, all three are well, well developed, but they're not usually communicated as much. And it, uh, actually, with with this, you are not. You you have to train your noticing uh, because you have to pay attention. Who's using what? What's left over? You need to experiment with with storylines, and then the, I had something for the crap, and then the crap was taken. So then the, the, that, that's the experimenting and the sense making is that you feel a little bit of peer pressure that you want to make the story a story and not just some random stuff about uh, what you see. An elephant on an island. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything else to reflect on, on uh, maybe the, the go find it game or the, the silly uh, being a chicken? I think it's nice that, I mean, we often associate play with childhood. So I think it's really refreshing to be as adults, like um, to be able to kind of like have that sense of creativity, like playfulness, spontaneity. Um, and I think that's, that's quite refreshing. In a way, it's a bit liberating. Um, so that's what I felt. So how, how spontaneous did people feel when we were doing, or when you were doing the chicken and the the, the <laughs> ant game? You know, it's quite. You know, some will find it very easy, but others will take. Well, qu quite often in a, in a play space, uh, I, I call it. Uh, everyone probably has heard safe space, but I also like to call it a, a brave space. So uh, yes. It, because there's a bit of structure in the play, uh, it will be very different for everyone because play means something different for everyone. Mm. Someone loves karaoke and other ones will dread it. But if the space is safe and brave enough, uh, you can, uh, uh, if you do like a chicken, you can really go for it. Uh, but you can also do it a bit more, yeah, okay, this is a bit awkward, but I'll do it. Yeah. But then at least you experience it a little bit and then you know. Uh, uh, a little, actually, it also reflects back to you. Do you know what is actually for me play? Uh, and um, one of the books I have uh, in the in the Make Tank that inspired me a lot is by Stuart Brown, uh, 
he talks about taking your play history. So really you sit down for 20 minutes and think about what was play when I was a child. Because then you know, in that time when you were a child, you didn't think about what is my play. It came all naturally. Uh, and then sometimes it can uh, give you uh, insight in that actually what you're doing now in life has a lot of ties into what was play in the past. And you come sometimes for new things, just to give a short, simple example. I all of a sudden realized I used to love playing lots of uh, darts as, as a kid, and I never played it. <laughs> so now I just play darts, and it's, it's such a nice uh, enrichment of my life. And uh, yeah, Stuart Brown is a brilliant book. These sort of games, it's probably the more you do it, the more you relax into it. Mm. When yeah. you first off, you're a bit. Yeah. 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 And. Uh, uh, so we have uh, started a, a playful lab on every Thursday, which is open for, for anyone, so the, the wider community, but also for staff and students. And uh, uh, we do lots of things, but one thing could be, if you're as an educator interested in doing a game like this, it's not here, this you should do. You can actually experience it in the lab, how it is for yourself, and then see if you like it or not, or not, not what it does. And then you can also uh, experiment with doing it and do it your way, because you can play this game in different way. You can put it in a bag and you have to grab one or everyone rolls one. So you can, in that lab, we do lots of experimenting. And, and, and uh, what I have found in the last few years, what is really beautiful about a play space, it works really quickly. Quite often I've done something on a Thursday evening and I'm doing it with my students the day after. And then it's really mind blowing how you can change the room. and. Uh, um, Sometimes, uh, uh, if I compare to students a few years ago, I get them in a space that took me like seven, two hour sessions and I do it in, in a couple of hours just because I, 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 I practice myself to, to use the games and activities at the right moment, at the right time. So where is this lab that takes place every Thursday? So that's uh, in the Innovation Center on the Stratham campus. And uh, it's at 5.30 every Thursday during term time. Uh, we just started uh, with uh, two sessions. One was my own uh, board game that I created, which is also a make tank. Uh, it, it's a board game about the transition from school to university. Right. Uh, uh, last Thursday we did sustainability, so we tried out a, a, a print and play game, uh, which is becoming more bigger as well, that you can uh, print a game from online. And uh, this was a, a, a game to get group discussions around how can we make the planet more sustainable uh, and then next week uh, we have a professor from Milwaukee uh, zooming in um, uh, and she is uh, a professor in theater and she's gonna uh, do stories with us and the power of story and uh, so, so that gives you a bit of a flavor what kind of different things and, and it's every every Thursday and, and everyone is welcome and you can bring friends family it's kid friendly so these two are always there as well uh, and uh, I think the 3rd of November we're going to do a bring your children to playful lab uh, evening so then we'll cater it a bit more for children and it's also bring your own drinks and bring your own food and we've got some snacks and stuff. And yeah, it is really a nice community where we talk and do and experience about play in all the different ways. That sounds fascinating. Yeah. 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 And uh, we, we're just starting also a cafe. Uh, during the uh, during 12 and 2 on the Thursday as well. So Thursdays really are a play uh, play. Even. And that's a little bit more towards games. So we offer lots of games from our games library uh, to play. Board type games. Yeah, but, but also these. So lots of things that are in Make Tank will be there as well. But also uh, the board game Pandemic will be there because the next theme of the cafe is also sustainability. I've got a card game about uh, carbon footprint. Uh, and, uh, and the chairs and stuff like that will be there as well. And that's, yeah, that's, it, the, the, the novelty there is it, not like a board game club, it is really a cafe that is open for, uh, for everyone. So not only students or only staff or um, uh, uh, like in the city centre, the board uh, games, which I think is a brilliant cafe. But it's more creating an informal space where we can, it's a little bit like the lab, but less experimental, that's basically what I'm saying.